Okay, now I'm going to show you how this little trick works, okay? On his channel, he's always showing you things that happened in the 60s and 70s about them quoting from Bibles that say lion and the lamb. And I'm going to show you how that all got started. What you're going to see in this video is the only Bible I've ever seen with the words lion and the lamb in Isaiah 11 verse 6. So I've got over 100 Bibles. I got 30 to 40 English Bibles here, and none of them say lion and lamb. But this guy in his video, he has a book that he's showing you where it says lion and lamb. Is it not suspicious that the only person with evidence that it says lion and the lamb is the one trying to tell you the Bible's been changed? I can't find it anywhere else, but they got it. Interesting, suspiciously interesting how the ones that are trying to tell the whole world the Bible's been changed can show you a book in Isaiah 11:6 where it actually says lion and the lamb. So I'll show you the video here. And also if you have a Bible that says lion and the lamb, please contact me. I would like to check it out. All right, otherwise take a look at this. Okay, just real quickly, I'll show you that I actually have 34 of them, 34 English Bibles. You see up here, it's the English, 34 is the number right there and on down from Darby all the way down to the new revised version, the Young's Literal Translation, you name it. I got them all right here. I opened up every single one of them over here in the tab. Right across here, you'll see they're all listed. And every single one of the 34 books, English Bibles I have, doesn't matter which one you click, you'll see Wolf and the Lamb. Not one of them has Lion and the Lamb. So how is it that this guy's the only one that I can find that has a book that says Lion and the Lamb? Probably because he made it up. But if there are other books out there that say Lion and the Lamb, I'd like to get it. So if anybody knows, let me know. But that's still not going to convince me that the King James Bible has been changed. The one that I'm paying attention to the most is the King James Bible. Right here you can clearly see it says wolf and the lamb just like all the others but the point to this is to fool you and make you believe that the bible's been changed take a look at this All right, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I think this trick works, how so many people are getting fooled to believing the lie. All right, watch the end. The third portion here in Isaiah is the section verse 6 to 9. The wolf will live with the lamb. The wolf will live with the lamb. The wolf will live with the lamb. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearlings together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. 
The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearlings together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. Okay, now I'm going to show you how this little trick works, okay? On his channel, he's always showing you things that happened in the 60s and 70s about them quoting from Bibles that say lion and the lamb. And I'm going to show you how that all got started. Take a look at his video here where he's trying to introduce the idea of going back into the 60s. Mankind will bow before the altars of God, be crowned triumphant over war and bloodshed, non-violent redemptive goodwill, proclaim the rule of the land, the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb shall lie down together. So he's going back there. You heard him say, the lion and the lamb shall lie down together. So he's got clips of these preachers quoting that in the 60s. Keep that decade in mind. I'm going to show you something. It ain't always going to be that way, James. It says so right in the Bible. The day will come when the lion will lay down with the lamb. And movie clips that people have quoted that, pastors have quoted that. Okay, now I'm going to show you why 1960s is very important on showing you how the lion and the lamb got introduced into society, into the world, into the music industry, and into the movie making industry, and how it filtered down into the churches and the pastors, convincing everyone for decades that that's what the Bible had always said. How did this begin? Let me show you. It all began with a song. A song was written and then some of the most famous and charismatic musicians misquoted the Bible because the song was written with the wrong words and then the song kept getting passed down. I'll show you here. Elvis, Johnny Cash and others were singing this song and then in the 60s, it started getting into the churches. Let me show you right now how that worked. All right, the song that says Lion and the Lamb will lay next to each other is called Peace in the Valley. You can see it right here. And it was written in 1937 by Thomas Dorsey, right? And Thomas Dorsey, and then it was passed on to look, Elvis Presley, right? And Johnny Cash also sung it. But let's read, the, let's read a little bit of this right here. The song became a hit in 1951. Remember, the video that he's showing you are quotes from the 60s. So it became a hit, the song, and the lion shall lay next to the lamb, the song called Peace in the Valley, which says that, became a hit in the 50s for Red Foley and the Sunshine Boys, right there, right? reaching number seven on the country and west bestseller chart right look at this it was among the first gospel recordings to sell one million copies i'll say that again it was the first gospel recording song to sell one million copies in history the lion shall lay next to the lamb was the first song most popular song to hit a million sales, right? So who do you think loved that song? The preachers, the Sunday school teachers, the churches, right? And that song says, the lion and the lamb. I'll show you Johnny Cash and Elvis both singing it here in just a moment. But that is an important piece of information for you to understand how something can get flipped around, all right? Now, if the words to that song got mixed up, he didn't write it the right way. He put lion and lamb shall lay next to each other rather than wolf and lamb. And then Elvis Presley and Johnny Cash get a hold of it. And even George Jones, look at this down here, famous country singer. 
George Jones on his 1962 album. Look at this, Johnny Cash, right here, 1969. And there's many people who have sang that song about the lion and the lamb laying next to each other. Let me just show you real quick what I have here. Okay, first let's jump over here to Elvis Presley right here. April, 1957, 1957, Peace in the Valley, right? Elvis Presley released in 1957 his version of that song. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Johnny Cash right here did it also. Look what it says, 1963 it was released. Uh, apparently on a Christmas album and we're gonna take a look at those songs here on YouTube here's peace in the valley with Elvis Presley you can see right here now I can't play this song without getting a copyright against it but I'll try to show you exactly where at in here that it's actually playing it around the hundred and uh, one minute 46 second listen very carefully well, Now the bear will be gentle, right? So let's get into it a little bit more. I'm trying to interrupt so I don't get a copyright strike on this. And wolves will be tame. Now listen to this next part. And the wolf will be tame. I'm trying to interrupt it so I don't get a copyright strike on this. We are commenting on this and it should be used for fair, fair use. All right, now look, look at the picture. Listen to the words coming up here. And a line shall let down by the land. So there you go. That's Elvis, right? Johnny Cash does the same thing. I'm not going to play it because I don't want to take a chance here and get a copyright on this, even though we should be able to use it. You go on YouTube, type in Johnny Cash, Peace in the Valley, type in Elvis, Peace in the Valley. You'll find these songs. I showed you the dates on the internet where these songs were produced by these very famous authors. I showed you on Wikipedia where the song was originally written in 1937 and you heard the words yourself, what it actually says, that the lion and the lamb will lay next to each other. And the Bible has said wolf and the lamb. So the problem that we're having here, it's easy to understand actually how this got into the churches when it was the number one gospel song, Elvis and and others, Johnny Cash and George Jones and others are singing it, they're gonna quote what it says, right? They're gonna quote what it says. Now, another good thing to point out here is this. It's very easy to see how the writer of the song in 1937 got it mixed up. If you look at the verse, it has the lion and the lamb in the verse. It's just in the wrong order. How easy is it to mix up the order of things? I mean. Right here is the wolf and the lamb is always said that in the beginning but here's the lion right here right and the lion down here again i mean we're not saying there's no lion and lamb that's not going to lay next to each other surely they'll be peace right but what we're saying is they're using this to say the bible's been changed that it used to say the wolf and the lamb will lay, lay next to each other causing confusion into the minds gaslighting people causing people to doubt the word of god the king james version bible is not been changed all right, now that's the one we trust the most. The whole thing is to attack your reliability and confidence in God's written word so that you don't trust it or people don't trust it or they doubt it. So don't let that happen to you. The lion and the lamb are in the verse, but it's never said the lion shall lay next to the lamb. It's always said wolf shall lay next to the lamb. Now you know that it, the confusion comes from a guy who wrote a song that was popularized and went into the churches, number one hit, Christian hit, sold a million copies, first one, and people loved that song. And it, they remembered the song lyrics rather than remembering what was really written in the book. Do not be deceived. The hour of deception is upon us. Peace.